Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Jackie Ina. Love a Bob, girl. It just gives us volume. It gives us height. It gives us flip, floppity, flip, flip, flop. It's what happens when you use two layers of gotta be glue. Testify. <clears throat> okay, very serious. So look, let's talk about Elf. Elf said, we not playing with y'all no more. We're bringing the heat. Get the gap, get the gap, get the gap. <laughs> so Elf just recently launched a new concealer. It's called the Hydrating Camo Concealer. So the last time Elf gave us a concealer, they gave us a 16 hour camo concealer. I did a review on it on my channel. If you wanna check it out, please do. I'll link it down in the description box down below. It was very matte. It was very long wearing. It was for the girls that have oily skin who are concerned about shine, who want something that's gonna be a little bit more bullet the hydrating, I mean, if you put two and two together, one could conclude this is probably the more moist version of that concealer. It also claims to be full coverage. It says it's giving us a satin finish. That's my favorite finish for concealers. And I'm also really just glad in general to see more drugstores coming out with concealers in general. There's still, just from what I've observed, even though it's 2020, there's still a huge lack of not only diverse concealers, but just diversity in formula, finish, shades, and all of that. So when I saw this, I was very excited. Also, I just want to give a quick shout out to Elf. I had reached out to them and I asked them, hey, you know, before I go rush to buy this, because naturally that's what my knee jerk reaction is when I see something new. I'm already on the PR. I just want to know when you plan on sending it because people are asking. And they said, actually, we'll send it out to you early. We're not planning on doing the PR send out until like, I think they said early February, something like that. So shout out to whoever runs the Elf Twitter page because I DM them. They were super swift and they sent these right over to me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you. I mean, because the girls love throwing shade about how ungrateful influencers are about PR and I always make it a point to be like look I don't have to get this stuff for free I get it it is a perk of the job but like I'm still grateful regardless thank you and and yeah let's just get into what's good with the concealer there are, what there's 25 shades why did I not know this I have I only have 14 I wanna get down to the bottom of why. No, I'm kidding. I actually find the first half of the spectrum completely useless for me because nobody's looking to me for light, medium swatches. Maybe medium, medium dark, down to like deep, ebony, rich. So thank you, Elf, shout out to you. They did send me some of the light shades. Maybe they thought some people like their highlights really light, not I, said the cat. But it's good to have the option. And it's also good to see the good ratio of what I'm looking at right now. So the darkest color that I'm gonna swatch is in the shade Deep Olive. This isn't like anything. This is definitely an olive. And on me, this is reading golden. Love that shade. I feel like I could definitely pop that in the innermost corners for a brightening highlighted look. I probably wouldn't go maybe one shade lighter than this, but all of the shades that are right above deep olive are kind of pink. I just wouldn't find much use for anything lighter than that in this collection. The next shade that I have after deep olive is deep chestnut. And this is described on the website as deep with rich golden undertones. I definitely don't see this as deep, but it is true. It is pretty golden. I think it's the golden pigment that's rich in this tone. Not that it's a rich shade. Does that make sense? But so far so good because everything at the drugstore is still always so red and orange. It's a lot, like there's no balance, there's no even ratio. And let's just hope we see a good ratio of both of them because there are people who do naturally have cooler red undertones. Nothing wrong with that, but I'm just saying, give us some balance, please, please get the gap. The next shade I have is Deep Caramel. Ooh. This one is described as deep with rosy cool undertones. The problem that I have is none of these shades are deep. That's the first thing that comes to mind here. Deep is such a subjective word. These are looking more like medium darks. These are tans, okay? This is a medium dark. This is where you start stepping in the NC50 category, NC45-ish. Definitely see some rosiness. Definitely a little bit more on the cool side, but I actually like that color. I might fools with that one. That one might be a little bit closer to like what I would use to highlight. And by the way, on the e.l.f. website, these are $6. So they're coming for color pops throats. They said it ain't safe, it ain't safe. I'm here for it because I use concealer so much. I don't really feel like you should have to splurge on a good concealer, personally for me. I'll splurge on skincare, I'll probably splurge on, no I will 100% splurge on eyeshadows. But I feel like with concealers, like there's definitely some better options, better than there were before. The next shade that I have is Deep Cinnamon. She better be red because when, yeah, she's definitely pink, pinkish red. When you talk about cinnamon, you're definitely talking about a shade that's a little bit more red, a little bit more pink. What does that smell like on the website? Yup, Deep with Rosy Cool undertones. 
see, your girl has an eye for undertones. Like, can't nobody ever. Sometimes it takes me a minute to really twang, catch the twang, catch that light. But like, when someone says it's golden, you better say it with your chest because I'm gonna be able to see it. I'm just saying. The next shade after Deep Cinnamon is Rich Chocolate. This is described as rich with warm undertones. So she's cute. Now we're getting in the actual dark category. Then I have Rich Cocoa, rich with neutral undertones. Definitely, first thing I see is pink neutral. Whenever someone says neutral, you might as well just say pink. Sometimes there's a little bit of pink in there, but here is Rich Cocoa. I'll give you guys a close up, don't worry. We're just going through the motions. I got you. And then the last shade that I have, I knew there was a shade missing, because after Rich Cocoa is Rich Walnut, and I don't have Rich Walnut, I have Rich Ebony. I would have loved to have seen what Rich Walnut looked like. I don't know why. They gave me two of the lighter concealers. I'm guessing they did that on accident, but the darkest shade is Rich Ebony and that is described as rich with cool neutral undertones. I think that this would have been a pretty impressive lineup. Rich Walnut, your presence is definitely missed. This is honestly for drugstore, like we have seen way worse way worse. I think it's definitely a good start. I know that not every brand wants to do the whole 40, 50 shade rollout, but like when I look at an even ratio of how the colors are distributed, this is not bad. Do I think there can be improvement? Of course. But it's also not the worst shade distribution I've seen. Elf, not bad. And I know that they've been kind of over the years extending the line as a whole. So let me give you guys a close up of what these look like. These look promising. There's definitely some potential. The coverage feels really, really nice. I'm going to apply a bit of this right underneath my eye because I do get under eye darkness. I really could have also gone in with deep cinnamon for this, but I felt like deep cinnamon would have been a little too light to correct. Like I want the corrector to either be my color or like slightly darker, but that's because I know what I'm doing. I know how to balance things out. If you're putting something underneath your eye that's a little bit darker, you may have trouble blending it out, so go lighter. I'm just being fully transparent and what works for me doesn't always work for everybody else. But I hope that that makes sense. So I'm gonna take my sponge, this is from, I love this Dose of Color sponge. Ooh, you know who also has a really good sponge? Elf. And it's a dead dupe for the Beauty Blender, but y'all hear it from me, y'all hear it from me. It's these white trail sponges. I don't even know if they still sell those, but I'm gonna go get them. I'm gonna get them. I got another, I got another Elf full face of makeup coming. Just you wait, sis. Oh girl, she is bouncing and blending. Oh, that blends out so fast. Did you see that? Yes, I do like to let my concealers dry down a little bit because it adds to the coverage, but that, that's really pretty. You really should put a little bit of foundation on your neck to even it out. But I only do that if I'm going somewhere important, like the Grammys or Essence Black Women Out. Like if I'm gonna be photographed on the red carpet, I'll do all that. But like, just to go to Trader Joe's, bro, you gonna take what you get, okay? Just to take Instagram selfies, you gonna put up with this mismatched neck, my guy. Your problem, not mine. Let's also go ahead and shut up and blend out the under eye. Now, I am so glad to be using a concealer that doesn't dry down as much as the 16 hour wear because that was a lot. That concealer was so matte that if you didn't almost like blend it out immediately after you were definitely bound to have trouble. Now I'm hoping that this doesn't have the opposite effect and ends up being too hydrating. I prefer like satin matte concealers. Born This Way Full Coverage, NARS Radiant Creamy, maybe even this, but I don't know, I guess we'll find out. It's blending out really well. It is full coverage. I can definitely see it's full coverage. But as you can see, just because I have really bright lights, it's still quite luminous and glowy. That looks good so far. I think that worked pretty decent as a corrector. Now that is the fourth to last darkest shade, the one that I used to correct. So keep that in mind. Now to highlight, I think I wanna go ahead and use Deep Chestnut. I'm gonna apply this on the back of my hand, even though I absolutely adore this applicator. The doe foot applicator is huge to work around and it is relatively easy to cover the surface area under the eye because it is so big, but I don't wanna cross contaminate and then you know get the cinnamon color on this one. So I'm gonna apply that on the back of my hand. And then just so I have more control, I'm going to apply it with a brush. Oh, that's really bright. And this is very yellow. The highlight is really gonna show us what time it is with the coverage and the finish and all that. That's really, because ultimately this is going to be the last thing you see until you put on powder. Can I put on deep caramel too? Dare I? Dare I? I might. Let me see. Hopefully it's not too dark to highlight though. Oh, that's good. Oh, okay, that's really nice. I'm just gonna put a little bit of deep caramel right below Misty Chestnut. 
So as you can see, I applied the concealer in all the areas that light hits the face. That's why they call it your highlight concealer. And when you correct under your eye like I do, like the concealers are gonna end up mixing anyway. So even though the shade looks really light, it's fine. It's going to balance itself out. Okay, so it's been a minute. I actually, literally like a minute. I actually wanted to sit and let this dry down for a little bit. You know my technique with concealers, but this one I especially wanted to sit for a little bit because it is so moist. So I'm now going to go ahead and blend that out. Why do people like the word moist though? Can we discuss that? Can we discuss the brainwashing? Let me look, let me not finish, let me move on. So I'm blending it out and it's still pretty movable, but she is a little set. So I do think that like when she says she's long wearing, I believe her. I believe her, cause look, she didn't move. <laughs> it's cool, I can fix this, this is real easy. So all you just gotta do is just get you like a little spray, not a setting spray, just get you a little hydrating spray, moisturizing spray, whatever and just start blending. I do that whenever I go more coverage because the moment you go in and blend a concealer immediately after you use it, that's when it tends to kind of like sheer out in a lot of ways. She's definitely not as wet as I thought she was gonna be in a good, in a good way though because the way that she's blending out is actually looking really pretty. And look at that color story. Look at the brightness. Look at the golden, just, just, this is actually a really beautiful color combo I created here. The coverage, it stays put. The finish isn't as hydrating as they say it is, like it definitely dries down. And to be honest with you, for those of us that have oily skin, this is such a good thing because I've noticed that like the more and more, I just let my skin be oily and stop trying to like control it and constrict it and keep everything so matte and drying, the better it actually is for my skin and the more I like the products. So I don't run from hydrating products. I embrace them. Not too much hydrating, but definitely more than I did like when I first started doing makeup. This is actually really pretty. Now, I think I'm gonna try my hand at like contouring with one of these. So I'm gonna try, I'm just gonna see what Rich Coco's talking about. She, oh, that's a really good contour shade. It's not that dark. Cause you know, I've kind of eased up on contour lately. Like I used to go like really rich when it came to contouring, but now, especially if it's during the day, I want it to look more like a shadow and less like an actual contoured face. My face is already contoured naturally because I have a narrow and like I have pretty sharp features. But this right here will just kind of add natural depth to my face and natural shape to my face. So I'm going to blend this into my forehead and oh, that's a really good shade. That is a really good shade. Oh my God, that looks so good. Oh, we love a gradient. Look at the material. This is turning out a lot better than I thought it would. Like, honestly, I like the way that this looks, but I wanna add like one more. I don't know why I do this whenever I try to conceal it, but I'm gonna go in with a little bit more deep chestnut. Just as a real quick, one last minute blend and brighten. I'm actually glad I got to do that last layer because then I got to see what the concealer acted like when it dried down for a little bit. And now I'm seeing exactly what it, you know, how it responds to being blended out immediately after. I honestly like them both ways. Now that we have a beautiful gradient under our eyes and we are highlighted and even, do I see texture? Uh-oh, what's going on here? What's going on here? Let me just blend that out. There's also a bit of a sticky, consistency to this concealer. I feel like it's doing that because it is long wearing, like it's not gonna budge or move. Now on top of this, I'm gonna take two powders. They're both from Fenty Beauty. The shade that I'm gonna use first is Cashew. And then on top of that, I'm gonna set it with Banana. Because just the same way I like to layer my concealers, I like to sometimes do, not always, but sometimes I like to do the same with my powders. Ooh, that takes two powder really beautifully. Because it has that sticky finish, what I'm feeling is it just instantly takes in the powder. Instantly, it just gravitates right to it. Now I'm hoping that because of that, this won't get too oily or shiny throughout the day. I don't mind embracing a little bit of shine, but look, it's gotta still be in place and it's definitely got to be long wearing, unlike your wigs. <laughs> I'm just playing, I'm not gonna roast you much. <laughs> I'm just playing, I'm just playing. Shout out to everybody who stayed this long and appreciates long, thorough reviews, because people be like, you talk too much. Okay, well then don't be in the comments asking questions then. I already answered them in the video. I don't hear it. It's always the same damn people. What about the price? I watched the video. Is it available in Canada? Watch the video. I don't know, but you should still watch the video. Okay, now I'm gonna take a little bit of banana and set her like right in the middle. 
Okay, so at this point, we've pretty much seen all we need to see regarding this concealer, how it wears, how it blends, how it looks. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of my face, wrap up this portion of the video, and then I'll check back in with you a little bit later. Okay guys, so this is the final makeup look. I keep looking at my monitor, cause low key, your girl is liking what she's seeing. Ooh, selfie check, selfie check, selfie check. Oh, 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 this looks good. I'm literally making shock faces because it looks that good. This is actually really flawless. And this isn't even my ideal lighting. Like the lighting that I film in is good, but it's good for filming. Like I wanna get in this natural golden out. What time is it? Can I still make some selfies? I'm right. Anyway, so this is the final product. I feel like if you try to clock whether or not I was wearing a $6 concealer, you wouldn't be able to tell. And that's the thing about some of these complexion products. They really stepped it up. I haven't looked at the ingredients just yet, but this does say it's cruelty-free and vegan. I know sometimes the drugstore, they, they, they do skip corners in order to get it good, but they don't always have the best ingredients. But at the very least, we do know that it's not tested on animals and it is vegan. So that's kind of a big deal, I think, for a drugstore brand and for a $6 concealer brand. Just to wrap up my, my initial thoughts, it is 4.30, but I finished this makeup look hours ago, so just so you get a time check for clarity, focus on me, there you go. It's almost five and I started this tutorial a little bit closer to like 2.33ish and I finished my makeup like over an hour ago. So I wanna at least wear this for like eight hours, see how it holds up, see how it looks. I'm babysitting my niece this week, so we're gonna take her to see a movie. I don't know what yet, but that's the full extent of how active today is gonna be and I wanna see how long this wears up. But first initial thoughts is the coverage is flawless. It really is a flawless concealer. Like I feel like makeup brands should now start adding what is the coverage like? What is the finish like? Is it flawless or not? Because right now what I'm looking at is not a single flaw. It looks really, really good. I'd love to see more shade varieties though. In order for me to like replace my favorites, like I need to be able to correct with this. I need to also be able to contour and I was kind of able to do that, but I did have to finesse a little bit. I did have to finesse a little bit. I also feel like this would be mixed really good with the 16 hour camel concealer because that one is so matte. This one is so hydrating, but truly this one isn't as moisturizing as you think it is, at least not yet. I don't want to speak too soon because I do have to give it a chance for a couple hours and see how it holds up. But so far I'm really happy with the finish, really happy with the coverage. I was able to decently do enough with the shades that I had. I'm going to check back in at minimum, at least like six hours, let you guys know my final thoughts on this concealer. I will see you guys a little bit later. So it is literally midnight. Double oh 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 oh. If you could just focus. Thank you. Instead of wondering why I'm only wearing one eyelash, why don't you figure out why your big toenail is missing? Um. Anyway, yeah, I'm tired and I ripped off my lash earlier <laughs> and I just could not be bothered to reapply it. I didn't end up going to the movies. I actually didn't end up leaving my house at all. All a lie. Guys, it was all a lie. She lied. You know, like how I just lied about that earlier? I told y'all I was gonna be doing all these activities and ended up staying mom. You know what, on my big fluffy couch, I never ended up leaving my house. As you can see, yes, I'm a little bit shiny and I constantly have to say this, I don't know why people don't listen to me, but everything that you see on these lights that I film with is way more dramatized than what I see in person. So when I'm looking in person, I don't really feel like I need to blot. I could, yeah, sure, it would look nicer if I blotted, but in person, what I see is just like a natural glow coming in. On camera, it does look like really oily, but I honestly feel like just after a full day wear of this concealer, I already like it 10 times more than the 16 hour wear. I remember the 16 hour wear was good and it definitely, from what I remember, was like long wearing. Now mind you, I haven't really touched that concealer since I first reviewed it because like I just have the other ones that I really, really like. But this one, I really, really like. Will it replace my favorites? I don't know if I can go that far with it just yet, but honestly so far, the Hydrating Camel Concealer is doing exactly what I wanted it to do and exactly what I thought it was gonna do. I already knew that this concealer was just gonna work better for me and was going to be like a bigger improvement from the 16 hour wear. 16 hour wear, like I said, was just way too mad. Sorry for making a lot of comparisons. It's just both of these concealers, I think, are relatively within the same price point and I know that a lot of people really like that first one. So I just wanna give you guys something to compare it to. I always like to come camera ready without making any adjustments whenever I do a wear test. So just so you see what it looks like when I do blot and remove some of that shine, that looks like a new face. I did cheat it, I did use, like I applied a little bit of powder. But I mean, I honestly am, oh, excuse me ladies, excuse me, good night. Like check in before bedtime, sorry. I feel like this is a really good concealer. I'm gonna wear it again. I have a couple meetings and like I have a full day. 
And I think I'm gonna give it another shot, just seeing how it holds up while I'm outside, while I'm in the sun. I don't like to be in the sun if I don't have to be. Skin cancer is a thing, even for black people. I just wanna test it out in my normal environment while I'm like out and like really wearing it all throughout the day, just to see if I like it. Maybe I'll do like a check-in on Insta stories or something, I don't know. I feel like I've already given you guys most of the tea on how this product looks. Here is a, look at how good, look at how good this looks. I mean, my skin looks still pretty flawless. I wouldn't change anything about this concealer. I think it looks really good close up. I think it looks really good in person, on camera. Definitely, I think, a better contender from what we already have at the drugstore because ColourPop concealer is really good. Technically, it's not drugstore, even though I do tend to put it in drugstore category because of the prices. And I haven't really seen a concealer this good since like the Maybelline, what is that stuff called? This big clicky foamy ball one. You know what I'm talking about. But shout out to Elf. Thank you again to whoever sent me this concealer as an early release. Shout out to you. Thank you for making my job a little bit easier. I would have honestly ordered this product to test it out for you guys anyway. Thank you guys for hanging out with me on today's video. I hope to see you on another one. I know I've been a little slow with upload. Be patient with me, okay? I got stuff going on outside of the YouTube world. Your girl's been working. But in the meantime, help me help you and watch some of my other videos. Guess what? If you're thinking of requesting a video down in the comments below, I bet you anything, I've probably already done it. So go ahead and watch another video and use that search function. It's there for a reason.